<laughs> ah, hello, and welcome to another episode of The Hat Historian. In this video, I will be talking about one of the more formal hats in traditional hierarchy, the Homburg. The Homburg is a hat that is categorized by its flat upturned brim, usually edged with a ribbon, a large hat band, and a single crease at the top. Traditionally made of grey or black felt, it was once considered second only in formality to the top hat, more so than the fedora, or even the more business associated bowler. So let us see where it came from. The hat takes its name from the town of Bad Homburg in Hesse, Germany. As the name Bad, meaning bath in German, indicates, it was a spa town, which was visited by many members of German and European royalty, and became the summer residence of Kaiser Wilhelm II, who would regularly invite his fellow royals from around Europe on hunting trips there. The town also housed a famous hat maker, Merkel, who made many formal vacation and hunting hats for the many high-class visitors to the town, including the Kaiser, who bought from them hunting hats with a top crease and a curled up brim in a traditional local style. One of his regular guests was the Prince of Wales, the future King Edward VII, who made many trips to Bad Homburg to visit his cousin, and participating in hunting trips with him. It is said that on one trip in 1882, he took a liking to the Kaiser's hat, and ordered one himself from Mokel, albeit in a more subdued grey than the hunting green that was favoured in Germany. The prince then brought it back to London, and began wearing it, and, being somewhat of a fashion trendsetter at the time, was quickly imitated by the fashionable class, much to his delight. The hat gained traction in England, and with the royal family being paragons of European style, it quickly spread to the rest of the world. As Edward would simply state that it was a hat from Homburg when initially asked, the name stuck. That is the most commonly accepted origin, though Italians tell another story. There it is known as the Lobia, after Cristiano Lobia, a popular Italian military and political leader during the unification period. In 1869, he was attacked by a man wielding a cane who struck him, denting his bowler hat. As Lobia was at the time investigating corruption in the government, conspiracy theories sprang up, and the government tried to discredit him by accusing him of faking the attack. A defiant Lobia appeared in Parliament wearing his dented bowler hat in an act that would greatly increase his popularity, and an unnamed Florentine hat maker is said to have capitalized on this by making bowler type hats with a crease on top, Capelli alla Lobia, which is where they say the hat originally came from before migrating to Germany. However, as the hat maker's name is unknown, it is impossible to verify whether this is true, or just a legend tacked on to Lobia's admittedly documented attack. Regardless of its earliest origins, the fact that Edward brought it back to London after his faithful trip guaranteed its success in fashion. It was a popular alternative to the bowler hat during the early 20th century, when men wanted to wear something with formal wear that did not bring to mind a bank employee, and then when the fedora came around in the 20s and 30s, the Homburg remained in place as a slightly more traditional, formal hat. Originally mostly grey in colour, it became common to also see it in black. As the century progressed, the top hat, as I mentioned in my video on the subject, began to become rarer and rarer in general wear, and so was gradually replaced by the Homburg as the most formal hat that you would see men wear. It was especially associated with what is called the stroller suit, a more formal version of the business suit, though a little less so than the full tuxedo. One very famous wearer of the hat during this period was British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who could often be seen sporting one when he was out. An avid wearer of various hats, allegedly to hide his receding line, the Homburg was said to be one of his favourites. Another famous character of the era, known for being a bit of a dandy, who favoured the Homburg, is fictional detective Hercule Poirot, in books by Agatha Christie, who has always depicted wearing one. The Homburg remained popular throughout the 1950s, particularly with older or more traditional men and politicians. This can be seen with men such as Konrad Adenauer, the German Chancellor, who favoured it. Dwight D. Eisenhower replaced the traditional top hat worn for presidential inaugurations with Homburg, befitting the stroller suit he was wearing. Kennedy after him would bring back the top hat one last time before it was, sadly, permanently abandoned. However, the politician who most associated the Homburg with his style was undoubtedly British Prime Minister Anthony Eden. Eden, a very stylish man, adopted the Homburg when it was popular amongst the upper classes of society. At a time when most of his political colleagues preferred the bowler or the fedora, he was always seen wearing a Homburg during his time in office. As a well-dressed and handsome man, his style was influential, and for a time, the Homburg became known in Britain and other places as the Anthony Eden hat, and a hat shop during a 1938 visit to New York was said to have filled its window display with Homburgs and a welcome sign as a tribute. It also became a handy attribute in his political cartoons. Like most hats, it faded out of fashion in the 1960s, when Western dress codes started abandoning hats altogether. The Homburg was no exception. 
However, it did experience a little bit of revival in the 1970s due to the success of the movie The Godfather. In it, Al Pacino's character wears a distinctive Homburg, though given his origins he'd probably refer to it as a lobbyer, and the popularity of the film led to the hat becoming briefly fashionable again, often even being referred to as a Godfather hat. But this resurgent popularity was short-lived, and it eventually retreated to very niche circles, or people trying to channel old styles. Nevertheless, it has not completely disappeared. It popped up again in some rap circles in the 1990s, notably with singer Biggie Smalls who wore one on occasion, and is now available in a whole variety of colors beyond the traditional black and gray. It has also crossed the gender line, and even some female royals, such as Queen Margarete of Denmark and the late Queen Elizabeth, sometimes wore hats that followed a similar design to the Homburg, though slightly modified. It is also still sometimes worn, though increasingly rarely, by Orthodox Jewish rabbis, often with a slightly wider brim than the usual style. While not worn commonly in the street anymore, it remains a perfectly acceptable hat to wear with black tie, or to slightly more formal events where top hats would be too much, but a fedora would not be enough. And people wishing to make a fashion statement, or any man wishing to channel a very traditional, formal aesthetic, would certainly be well served by wearing a Homburg. From a simple German hunting hat, to near the top of the headwear hierarchy, the Homburg has certainly left its mark on fashion. So I hope once again that you found this video interesting, and will join me again soon for another hat. Until then, I tip my hat to you.